game on Sunday, man. You, I know you're nervous for the Rams, but you got to be a little enthusiastic after being there. Bro, that, that game atmosphere was ridiculous. The energy that I could see. That place was rocking anyone was there. And a lot of the, a lot of the uh, Super Bug fans were there, too. Uh, Pete Bug. Tampa Tones. We are joined by Lee Goon tonight, uh, host of the Pat and Aaron show of WDAE. Uh, Pat Donovan. And it sounds like Stunna is bumbling a little bit. Going to put him on mute for a second until that gets a little clear. But we're joined by Pat It looks Donovan. like Stunna is hanging out with Cheech and Chong in a car with the windows up or something over there. <laughs> it does look like you got a little... No, bit. my, my uh, camera's broke. Howdy ho, howdy hey, how the hell are you guys? And I just want to say first and foremost, J-Lo's got something going on. I don't know. I see two of the damn guy down there. But nonetheless, it's the great Gene from Buck What You Heard, Tampa Tones here. I think J-Lo's trying to join and Huncho will be joining as well. And we got some great guests tonight, some writing content, some guests, a professional wrestler joining the show. Ah, speaking of wrestling, I'll give it over to my tag team partner, and I think he might be making a turn tonight, he said on Twitter. Gene, how the hell are you? Great to have you back, brother. It's a blessing to have you here and uh, excited to talk with you again, my friend. You know it, the super heavyweight weighing in at 655 pounds, allegedly. <laughs> the gimmick stealing, beer swilling, son of a gun, and I'm ready to roll. Yes. And we, speaking of beer, we still got to figure out our beer for the Bucketeers, Buck What You Heard 2024 football season. Here's what we're going to do as well. A little behind the scenes. We got to get the listeners involved. Hey, we we do. Love a beer. There's a beer you love. Will the Brewer, I know he's going to join in sooner or later. Maybe next. Maybe next week or next show or when the draft clears, that's when we could maybe have a beer draft where a lot of listeners nominate a beer. And we kind of do like a March Madness style, you know, tournament bracket or something like that. But that's a good idea, Gene. Get the listeners involved. Yeah, we need them. I mean, because it's going to be the official beer of the Bucketeers coming 2024, baby. And if you got, yeah, it's going to be a great time. And I'm looking forward to that. You guys could catch me with that beer pregame, postgame, week of, week after, damn it. What? Another beer. What? Some cold (laughs) sea Boston style. Speaking of listeners, we're. Joined by great listeners, we got MK, we got Tempe, we got Neil L, we got Christopher Cole, we got Bud Can of Bliss. The list goes on and on and on, and we'll give some AEW. Hey, Bud can go through a table, too, if he keeps this up talking about kayfabing. And for those curious, there it is. Stop kayfabing. No one's kayfabing here, man. You'll see that. Our man Neil L staying consistent with the hit the like button. We'll sprinkle in a touch of AEW in the trio competition. JLo, are you our trio tonight? Are you there, brother? I I uh I see you, but I'm not sure if you're in. Are you here, JLo? Yes, sir. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. How you doing, brother? Good How's to have you, here, brother. Hey, how's it going, fellas? Excited to talk some Buccaneer football, man. Getting closer and closer to the draft. Two weeks from tomorrow. Christopher Cole says it right there. Two weeks until the draft. Speaking of tomorrow, though. Real quick, some of you wondering what the hell my hat is. I got a Masters hat on, or not a Masters, a golf hat on, John Daly hat on, because tomorrow is the Masters. So, um, you know, spicing it up a little bit, like to keep sports involved here greatly on the program. Tempe, sorry, we were running five minutes late, so I don't think you missed it. Hope you come back. Hope you join us here on the Bucketeers. And as Neil says, hit that like button Justice saying, peace. Where you going, Justice? Join us. Stay here, brother. Um, and then Bud says, get the table. <laughs> so, Gene, I think you and Bud might be going one-on-one soon, brother. Hey, you know what? Ain't nothing but a word, man. Not hard to find. <laughs> hey, so. I love being a heel, man. This is fun. I'm, this is, I enjoy this. <laughs> Gene, I, we haven't seen heel Gene. And, well, I haven't seen heel Gene, I don't think, ever. So, I'm watching my own. I'm watching my ass tonight, man. I'm making sure that I don't get screwed over here by the great Gene as he might cash in the money in the bank any given time on the Bucketeers. Justice says he's here for it. Hell yeah, Justice. Um, One of the great Buck What You Heard listeners coming over. But speaking of great, we have a great guest in line tonight and kind of to explain the lay of the land of tonight's show. 
We have a very fun one on deck. First off, we're going to keep chit-chatting here for a little bit more, but as many of you know, it's been our month-long mock draft where we've had some great guests so far. For those of you that missed it, we kicked it off with the Bears. We had Juice from ONTAP Sports Network join us last Wednesday. If you guys missed it, the episode's out now anywhere, YouTube, Google, and more. He picked Caleb Williams for the Bears. Surprise, surprise, right? Then the great guys this last Saturday from the Command This Podcast. Man, it was fun. We had Steve. We had Phil. We had Devin. Devin chose Jaden Daniels, but yeah. Steve and Phil chose Drake May. So we ultimately went with Drake May for the Commandos because two against one there. And, yeah. uh, you know, they were all – Gene, I don't know if you ended up catching that show, but all three of them, first off, real fun show – they had some stories about Jay Gruden that were holy crap, knock your socks off. I, I you know what? It, it made me feel not so bad about uh, Raheem Morris just hearing the stories about Jay Gruden. To be honest, I'm serious. No, and that's exactly right. Raheem Morris rumored to do a couple things in Tampa, which he was young. Jay yeah. Gruden rumored to do a whole lot, and um, as the command this podcast will put it, we're not going to spoil it. But they said. His, uh, you know, pretty much the Jay Gruden urge to have sex almost cost Alex Smith his leg. I'll leave <laughs> it at that. You know, if, if you guys want to connect the yeah, dots. Just, yeah, yeah, be sure to go back and check that episode out. And they're really cool guys. They said they want to have us on um, during the season when the Bucks play Washington. We'll probably have them back on as well. But Dev, uh, you know, you never know what you got with those guys. Dev throwing around P. Diddy references and whatnot. <laughs> Shit was getting all sorts of crazy, but fun crazy. And then tonight, we're stepping it up a notch. I wanted to do the first two on their own because although Caleb Williams, a presumed pick, still it's a number one overall pick. You got to, you know, have some specialty behind it. Then number two is when the craziness gets in because you could have Jaden Daniels, you could have Drake May. Maybe outside chance of Marvin Harrison or J.J. McCarthy. A lot could happen behind pick number two. Tonight, we're stepping it up a notch, fellas. So next, after we get done with our itinerary, we have the Patriots on the clock. And we may or may not be joined by J.C. Allen tonight. I know his son is football practice. He's catching up from the Bucks cruise. Our great friend from SI Game Day, Bucks Game Day, Sports Illustrated. But he has... His pick is in. He submitted it via writing just in case he can't make it tonight. So we have the Patriots on the clock. We'll get to J.C. Allen making their pick here shortly. After that, we have the Arizona Cardinals on the clock. Arizona native Jimmy Mundo and fantasy football guru will be making that pick. He's on a flight to Vegas for a work conference, so he's actually submitted his pick in writing as well. He has a couple submitted just in case his guy gets taken by the Patriots. And then the Chargers, we're going to phone a friend, a.k.a. we're going to steal a mock drafts pick for the Chargers. Go ahead and glue that in because we don't have the time for all these guests because 710 Eastern, we're joined by professional wrestler and New York Giants fan Cujo, formerly Cujo. known Cujo. And it's his new act. It's his new gimmick as he works to make his way up in the Indies. He was formerly known as Ryu Hendricks, but he's a lifelong Giants fan, New York Giants. And he's going to be making their pick as a special guest. So Gene and JLo, I know we're all wrestling guys here. It'll be fun with the professional wrestler hopping into our ring. Yeah. Hell yeah. I like that name Cujo, man. That's dope. Yeah, as long as he doesn't ruffle my feathers, we're good. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and I acknowledge him. <laughs> Cujo, a great friend of mine. He's a big boy, man, and he's been really going through some good stuff over there. A couple of years back, he actually cracked. I forget if it was a top 200 or top 300 black wrestlers in the United States. He made that list. So, um, you know, he's he's a I've man. Seen, I've actually seen his matches on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. He His matches are available on YouTube. He's had P. Diddy has some skin. <laughs> 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 there is no shortage of, of P. Diddy jokes out there. So just <laughs> oh, man, that one I was, you know, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but the first <laughs> oh man, Justice, you're the man. I'm I'm just gonna say that. Uh we appreciate 
Uh, Ken Barry with the first shout out to Gabe KB, great friend of the shows. We love KB. He is the man himself. He's been on Buck What You Heard a plenty. He's been on our show a plenty. We get along with him greatly. He's in our fantasy league. He runs our fantasy league, so we call him the commission, this neck of the woods as well. And, and you know what? To be honest, what I love about KB is KB actually played the game, you know, at a high level. And, uh, you know, he he understands the offensive line. I would not argue with that guy about the offensive line at, at any point. Just no. And the minute I, I always cited KB as credible. I mean, Gene only has credible peeps on his show, whether it was Christina, KB himself. So KB's always been a great, informative guy. But when I seen him on Twitter have, um, I believe it was um, – baseball is great center fielder drawing a blank former ray had his back though j-lo come on you're the rays guy here center fielder baseball is fun um got dfa'd a couple years back bounced around a little bit but he's friends with kb he endorsed kb sports fandom i don't know if we lost j-lo here or what but um no i'm here i'm here you said you said center fielder like brett phillips yeah brett phillips that's what it is yeah, y'all, come on, Ray's guy down there. I, I forgot about Brett Phillips, but, yeah, he grew up with KB, and he endorsed KB on Twitter, said, man, this guy was a baseball player like no other in high school. So whether it was his football, his baseball, KB has been fantastic. Brett Phillips, a guy who liked to have a lot of fun out there, beloved by the Rays. He's, he, he came up with the motto, baseball is fun, and was a fan favorite. So who, is, who is the wide receiver? Who is the wide receiver that – um Nelson Aguilar, I believe. Nelson Aguilar, yeah, it's another guy. See, I remember that one, and I remembered Brett Phillips, but there's so many guys in the back of my mind that literally, there's so many race players, you know. But yeah. Oh, I, I don't want to hear from you down there, Mister Ray. You were supposed to have my back there, and you didn't. So uh, uh, <laughs> the final on. boss is going boss mode right now. I'm kidding. I, I see that. <laughs> I'm kidding, J Lo. I know. Uh, you know, it, there's so many names out there. I kept want. I knew it wasn't him, but Sam Fold kept coming to nine. Um, former Cub Brett Jackson, but Brett Phillips. So I'd like to trade up with the Giants. Have his people call my people. Wow, our Bears guest from last week would like to make a trade with the Giants, and then. Oh, snap. After Cujo comes and goes, we're going to do the Gene Hot Seat Challenge briefly. We're going to send J-Lo's ass to the hot seat because uh, – right, I think we should make it happen. Yeah, because, you know, that, that breaks my heart with the Brett Phillip. No, I'm kidding. But KB <laughs> says, Nelson Aguilar, I thank Nelly for my recruiting. Fantastic basketball player as well. Played on the same travel teams growing up, knowing since second grade. So – yeah, Tampa, obviously, you know, Florida, Texas, and other hot places are often a sports melting pot as, um, you know, they're nice. You know, like, you know, when you talk baseball, you talk about Tino Martinez and uh, Gary Sheffield and players like that, you know, Hall of Famers that, you know, settle in, in, in Tampa. And, you know, just whatever sport it is, you know, you will find, you know, players and former players that have settled there just because it's the – the jewel of the east to me agreed and you know you keep finding tampa more crowded and crowded but it's prolific to athletes sports figures out there the tampa area that is i'm saying you know between tampa st Pete, clearwater all those beautiful spots and you know even professional wrestling is a tampa hotbed um that area hotbed as well and Tino is the most amazing. Yeah, Tino seems like a great guy. I never met him myself. My son, my son actually played baseball with, or some baseball, football with his son. Uh, and who was the coach? Um, we all know him. He, and I'm drawing, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. He lives over in South Tampa. Golly. And he just, he was on, he was on uh, 98. Uh, oh God, it'll come to me. And I'm looking right at him. I can see his picture. Is it Lou Pinella you th you tell no, me? No, it was it was the uh he was offensive lineman for the Bucks. What was his name? Oh, oh Ian Beckles. Ian Beckles, yeah. Ian Beckles. And uh so Ian Beckles, uh my son Tino Martinez and I think John Gruden's son all played uh for the on, on the in the same league. And uh, I know that Tino Martinez and my son, my son both played together. So yeah, I, I do remember that. That's really good stuff right there, and that seems like the type of spot Tampa is. You might 
run into who knows who is either a fellow father, fellow mother, or coach of your kid's team. But that's really cool stuff there. No, Nick, I'm sorry. I forgot your name if you watch this. Uh, next time I'm in town, I'll stop by. <laughs> Gene's giving his stamp of stopping by right now, right now. So uh, we'll see there. But, yeah, the Gene Hot Seat Challenge. Then we'll get to our final word. But right now, Bucks coming on the clock soon, couple weeks here, 15 nights to be exact. We'll be picking number 26. Mock drafts have my head spinning. They're going every which direction right now. Jason Light likes to be mysterious. Remember last year, Kalijah Kansi was barely a breath out of the Bucks brass before draft night. You barely heard a word out of him, which Gene, to me, tells me who the hell cares about these mock drafts because I don't think I remember recalling any single mock draft last year that had the Bucks going Kalijah Kansi. So right now, um, it tells me nobody really knows what the Bucks are doing and Jason Light's staying rather mysterious. You know, to me, I just say you sit back and enjoy the ride. Uh, with Jason Light, he drafts in a vacuum. He may make a mistake, but he always rebounds off the mistake, and he he just like hit, he knocks it out of the park. No, no general manager is perfect, but what I've seen from Jason Light, and I and I can't remember the stat. Uh, I don't know. I think it was in our in the in the um, fantasy draft uh, chat. They had talked about the number of players that are currently on the Bucks roster. I think the Bucks are within the top with the top 10 or something like that, top five, with the number of players that are on their roster that were drafted. And and again, I mean, that's how you build a team. That's how you build a stable team. And it's something that, you know, we were griping about. I was I can remember with uh me and KB back in 2020, and we were griping about getting consistency, getting these players in here and keeping them here. And we can see that year after year, we're not going out and bringing in strangers in the team and hoping they'll blend. We're worried about getting these draft picks, these homegrown players back on this team. And going into the draft this year, again, I'm just going to sit back and listen to the Rex to you experts, because to me, I don't know what he's going to do. I have no clue what Jason Light has planned. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy it. And I do trust the process. I trust the process greatly. And a guy like Jason Light makes you feel a lot more comfortable with trust in the process. And I'll just say a couple other of our previous GMs have. Let's just say that, uh, Mark Dominic. I'm looking at you, buddy boy. Um, <laughs> Heel Gene's the best, man. Uh, J-Lo, <laughs> thoughts, thoughts on what Gene's saying and uh, thoughts on Heel Gene, to uh, be exact, J-Lo. I know he's on fire tonight, but... um. <laughs> But um, Jason Light's done a great job when it comes to drafting players. And like Gene said, he's going to make certain, you know, pits that may not fit or may not work out. But he rebounds real quickly on the next draft on picking players. And it, it could be anybody at this point. We pretty much added depth pieces all around the team. So whoever we add in the first round, obviously, obviously it's got to be somebody that's going to see the field, who's going to play right away. He's going to have to nail at least two to three of the draft picks in this draft to be starters or role players to be exact. So sit back, enjoy the ride. Hopefully we don't trade out of our first round pick. That'd be kind of disappointing on the first night, but hey, we'll see. Hey, yeah. And on top of that, I, I just wanted to jump in here real quick. Uh, uh, J-Lo, you, you were spot on with that. Um, what Jason Light has been able to do is identify – what works best for his head coach, his offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. And he's worked off of that, and it's just been very successful. And we can see the the start of that with uh, Bruce Arians coming in. And I think from there, it's just been – he's been learning up until that point, and now he's gotten comfortable. He understands these things. And uh, <clears throat> I just – I look at some of the ideas that we see around the league – uh, ESPN, CBS, some of your other networks out there that are picking for the Bucks, and you know they've all been way off with with a lot of the uh, picks that they've made going back to Vita Vea. So to me, I say, you know what, you got to trust the process. Let them do their thing, and let's see what happens. I mean, they haven't. Uh, Jason Light has had this team competitive for years now, and let's let's keep this ball rolling. 
Yeah, I agree here. And it looks like we might be joined live by the great J.C. Allen here for the Patriots draft pick himself. Great media man for the Bucks, But, you know, everybody has their home roots, and that's why we have him here for the Patriots. And we had to borrow him from Rakishi and the bloodline to get him here. It took a lot of work to get J.C. Allen here from his busyness, the Bucks cruise. He was tangled up on there for a little bit. Mr. WrestleMania himself, how the hell are you doing, brother? What's going on, fellas? How we doing? Good. Um, are you baked like a potato from that cruise? Did you get a lot of sun? Uh, not too much sun. Um, but I, I, I tell you, man, my first cruise had an absolute blast. If you guys are thinking about joining Was the that your cruise, first ever? First ever cruise, yeah. Never been on one. Yeah, I, it was an absolute blast. I mean, if you're a fan of the Bucks, I highly recommend it. They're going to have payment plan options you can pay, you know, uh, if you can't afford the outright cost, but highly recommend it. You know, there are players galore on there. You talk about, uh, you know, Rashad White, JTS, Yaya Diaby, Christian Izian, um, Kate Otten, Greg Gaines, Luke Gedeke. I mean, the lineup was incredible. Legends, Dexter Jackson, Martin Gramatica, Derek Brooks, Warren Sapp was a surprise guest. They had um, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Giles was there. They had uh, Robert Batman Woods, mm. um, Dave Moore and Gene Deckerhoff, Brian Ford, of course, Captain Fear and some of the cheerleaders. It was just an amazing time, packed full of activities and fun things to do regarding the Bucks, panels, games, trivia. Um, if you are a fan of the Bucks, I cannot recommend going on that cruise next year um, once, it, once the announcement drops. Uh, hey, they they, they teased maybe a certain... Uh, 87 might be on next year, so definitely mm. check it out. Hey, JC, did you get to interview Batman? Uh, I didn't get to talk to Batman as much as I wanted to. How was that? It was good. I mean, he's got tons of stories. There was one story he told that he and a couple of the guys on the team back in the day, they actually had a band, um, and they actually had a single drop in that was pretty popular in Tampa Bay, but during their dinners after practice, him and some of the guys on the team that played together, they'd actually play songs um, in, while the guys, you know, while the guys were in the cafeteria eating dinner. So it was, it was, uh, it was one hit for them in that 19, I think it was 1979 season when they went to the NFC championship, ain't no stopping us now. And that was their theme song. And they'd play that, you know, every night in the cafeteria. Now it would be like kind of the, the pump up song. So it was, it was some really good stuff, in-depth stuff. I mean, when they did some like player panels um, and some like with some of the older guys, Gene Deckerhoff and Dave Moore, they would just kind of talk about the old days. And, you know, obviously Dave Moore is kind of special because he kind of transcended, you know, for 15 years in the league. He kind of started before the free agency era and then all the way through that Super Bowl. Um, there was a lot of cool stuff from him. Warren Sapp had tons of good stories uh, with his panel with Gene, Brian Ford incredible he's mr positivity and always had some good stuff to say good stories with his almost 30 years with the organization so lots of good information lots of good lots of good stuff you know you stopped in qs you stopped in bahamas mm -hmm. i feel like an infomercial for it but that's how amazing it was unfortunately me and my wife uh, have sea legs still <laughs> we're trying yeah. to get our feet under each underneath <laughs> un underneath us first time when the crew yeah. still feels we're kind of bobbing and rocking a little bit but doesn't take away from how amazing the cruise was food was great people were good hospitality was great if you're not boozing if we're if we're moving we're boozing is what my uh, motto was so it's just an absolutely great time for the both of us and that's just that and i'm a big cruise guy that's my go-to vacation actually is cruising for that reason exactly it's you know you're boozing cruising you're having a great time you're seeing bits and pieces of the world throughout it you look out on the balcony and it's just miles and miles of water all the workers are fantastic they come from around the world and it's great stuff yeah. i believe the bucks cruise is celebrity cruise line for those unfamiliar correct that's owned by royal caribbean and royal caribbean is known as one of the four big wigs of cruising you got royal caribbean you got uh, Carnival Cruise Lines, you got Norwegian, and then you got Disney Cruise Line as well, completing the big boy gauntlet there. So, JC, it doesn't surprise me that you had a great time, and it doesn't surprise me you have sea legs still, because once you go on a boat, once you're on a vessel that big for the first time, kind of, uh, you know, underrated, it's like going on an elevator a little bit, like a high up, 
skyscraper type elevator and then you get off and it feels like momentarily you're on an elevator but since you're on a cruise so long it kind of stays with you a couple yeah. of days so maybe up to a week is so my <clears throat> yeah so i'm hoping to get rid of that soon man but otherwise we're, we're looking to book our next cruise and we'll be back on the bucks cruise next year and uh, absolutely absolute blast of a time gotten some really and you get some as a fan you get really one-on-one -on -one time with the players too there's tons of little kids out there that was um you know playing football with joe and yaya and Christian and just having that one-on-one -on -one time. We're not really, have you ever gone through like an autograph session to kind of sign, say your piece and move on? Well, you really had time to talk to the players and kind of get to know them on a personal level. And, you know, the players, that was one of the biggest things that they, st that stuck out to them was just being able to have that interaction, have them see them. Hey, we're not just guys in the football field We're we're, you know, we're people too. And to build that relationship with those fans that will last a lifetime. It was amazing. I know the Lightning do it now as well, and kudos to the Bucks for starting that. And I'll definitely be going next year. I'll tell you that. I, I know I got a Disney cruise booked as well, but once you go on a cruise, you're hooked. You're already looking to your next, and that's the best part of the next cruise is planning it all and all that fun stuff. But mild advice before we move on to football, but if you go cruise and try and stick with one cruise line if you like it because it benefits you, you could actually do onboard credits, discounts, all that fun stuff. So. There you go. But J.C. Allen, whether it's Bucks cruising or whether it's other football stuff, brother, always a pleasure to have you. First off, catch us up on some of your work. I know you're catching up on stuff, obviously, just getting back from the cruise. And secondly, um, not that you got to reveal it yet, but do you know where you're going at number three for the New England Patriots? I do know where I'm going for there after much deliberation. As far as what I've got cooking, I've got a roster reset coming out. Bucks made a bunch of transactions uh, throughout the month of March. So just kind of resetting the roster, what it looks like, what the needs might be. Um, right after that, I'm gonna I'm I'm working on my mock draft, my second mock draft right now. So I'll have that out pretty soon. And in the meantime, working on my scouting reports. Now this isn't gonna be a full scouting report of every prospect. I'm not going to talk about Caleb, Caleb Williams or Drake May or Jaden Daniels. Because let's face it, they have no shot at falling to the Bucks at 26. So hmm. I'm going to focus more of this on more Bucks specific, and I'll go round by round. And there might be one or two prospects in a round. There might be none. So first round quarterbacks, let's say I'm not doing any first round quarterbacks. Second round, there might be a guy I throw in there. Hmm. Third round, fourth round, so on throughout the draft, guys who may be of target of what the Bucks might look at. So. That will release every day leading up right up to the draft and my ultimate, my, my final mock draft right before the draft kicks off. And then I'll, we'll be on site for the draft. Um, so night one, um, I've got my son's football practice, but after that I'm flying down to, to, Raymond, James, to Raymond James and one buck place to um, you know be there for that, that first round selection if they make it. I'll be there all of night two. Um, day three, I'll be, you know, I'll still be plugging away, but I'll be working a little remote there as my son has his bowl game. So that will be, um, that will be fun for me and him uh, to, to wrap up his season. But yeah, uh, you know, we're, we're in full draft mode now. We're less than what, 20 days away. So well, 15, no, days, 15, 15 days, days to be exact and kudos right. to your son. Wish him the best in the bowl game. Cool that he's going bowling. That's what they call it when you make a bowl yeah. game. He's going bowling. That's awesome stuff. And Just I'm mad got his now. first win this weekend, notched uh, two, uh, two tackles and a sack. So working from that interior defensive line position, it's difficult in, in, in Pop Warner where they're running to the outside so much. But he was able to bully through, get a sack, and a tackle for loss. So kudos to him. Mm, he's many um, Tavin Bryan out there. Um, <laughs> Kobe have Turner. Yeah, yeah, that's what it seems like out there, and that's awesome stuff. Wish him well for me. He's awesome. He's a great kid, and uh, you're a cool pops yourself, I guess. Yeah, so uh, we'll put yeah. it like that. But speaking of uh, just life, man, I was supposed to go to the draft. I hope you go next year in Green Bay. I will be there next year in Green Bay. But hotel, too cold. hotel for the draft, it won't be bad, bro. For no, I'll be, a, I'll be on site, so i got to be on site talking to the players and prospects and stuff like that at the end you know, via Zooms and stuff. So mm. no draft for me, but we will have our very own River Wells at the draft this year in Detroit. So he'll probably go to Green Bay next year as well. That's cool. And uh, good luck getting a hotel in Green Bay because they said they already had people calling about the draft. It, it was insane, man. I was there for preseason Patriots Packers this year. And they were like, yeah, you know, we're already getting calls about the draft. I'm like, that's like 18 months away. They're like, 
Yeah, we know, but you know, it's going to be crazy. crazy. Got to stay in Appleton. Yeah, got to stay in Appleton or, uh, you know, maybe Milwaukee, then just drive the hour and a half up and bite the bullet. But speaking of biting the bullet and speaking of New England, JC, I think I know where you're going. Just to recap, first overall pick, Caleb Williams, made by Juice from ONTAP Sportsnet to the Chicago Bears is Cleva Mises Bucketeers. Let me talk to you. And then the command this podcast, Dev, Phil, our friends over there, and Steve, they ended up going with Drake May. One of them went Jaden Daniels, but two of them went Drake May. So we ended up ultimately going Drake May for the commanders. JC, that leaves you with the obvious choice, or does it? And number three for the Patriots. Well, after much deliberation, we've, we've fielded many phone calls. Teams trying to th- uh, trade up. Minnesota offered us both of their first-round picks and a future pick next year. Um, but, you know, we're in a spot here where we're rebuilding. Um, and this, this is my home team, Patriots, here that I'm selecting for. Really thought about Marvin Harrison and Malik Neighbors. Wide receiver has been a trouble spot for the Bucks. Going back to forever, I mean, they've had to outsource most of their picks. Thank goodness a seventh rounder like Julian Edelman worked out. But before that, Randy Moss, Wells Swelker. You look at some of the guys that are synonymous with the Patriots and winning. Those guys were not drafted and developed by the team. You have to go back to Deion Branch way back in 2002. 2003 and even he was like a third round pick so you know we really thought about grabbing one of these top tier wide receivers we feel like marvin harrison's the safest pick in this draft and malik neighbors probably has a higher ceiling than him but ultimately when you're rebuilding a franchise the most important position is quarterback so with the third overall selection in the tampa tones bucketeers draft the patriots are going to have to take the best quarterback on the board a guy who is very different than what we've had recently um, in Mac Jones, going back to Tom Brady. I don't count Cam Newton because he doesn't count ever. Uh, <laughs> Patriots lore. Um, but we're going to go here with LSU superstar Heisman Trophy winner, Jaden Daniels. There you have it. The New England Patriots led by the great J.C. Allen from Sports Illustrated. Ultimately goes with Jaden Daniels. That's our draft music here for now, if you don't realize. But Jaden Daniels and JC, do you think that ends the run of quarterbacks in the top 10 is real Bucks talk? Said, who let this Pats guy on? It's our Patriots night. We had to give him <laughs> on. And, you know, whether it's Bucks or Patriots, I wouldn't rather talk pigskin with anyone else. So, JC, do you see that stopping there? Is that the end of the bloodline? I mean, the uh, quarterback line in the top 10? No, not at all. I think the next most obvious pick is either here at four or or at five here. Um, if the Cardinals decide to stick around, I think the Chargers would jump at a package that the Vikings could throw over to them, um, and they'll come up for J.J. McCarthy, who I think would be a really good fit in Kevin, Kevin O'Connell's system in Minnesota. Um, you know, there's a lot of discrepancy, run first team, but you got to remember this is a kid who I think is fourth in touchdowns and sixth in passing yards in Michigan, even with such a run-heavy scheme. His ceiling is, is, is high. Um, you know, he's kind of just scratching the surface, but he's got tremendous arm talent. Um, he can make all the throws and not just the throws that, um, you know, the big time throws, but you're talking about those short intermediate, um, middle of the field type stuff as well. So I think JJ McCarthy is, is probably the next guy off the board. I think four quarterbacks likely go in a row and then you start to see some wide receivers and some tackles. Maybe, maybe Dallas Turner sneaks in the top 10. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go to Atlanta in the eighth. But I think you're looking at wide receivers, quarterbacks, and offensive line dominating the top 10 of this draft. And that's incredible stuff. I agree with you there. It seems like a top-heavy draft specifically for the offensive side of the ball. Not too many uh, big play defenders seemingly nipping at the butt. We are minutes away from being joined by professional wrestler Cujo but right now for a couple more minutes we're joined by the great JC Allen of Bucks Game Day for Sports Illustrated and uh Pirate Parlay podcast of the sick podcast network for the Bucks uh Gene or JLo any more questions for the great JC Allen while we have him a couple more minutes yeah I I do uh with Bill Belichick moving on and this is a totally different look for this New England Patriots team what is the direction that they're working on to build? Uh, is it to be defense first, or is this going to be an offensive 
uh, first team uh, as they move forward. Because they're, I mean, they're they're going to struggle with this division. I mean, you look at what new, the Jets have done in the offseason, what they did last year. When you look at the Bills, even though the Bills have kind of declined a little bit, um, it's just going to be a, a tough road for New England based on what we're seeing right now. How is that going to look? And how are they going to keep the fans engaged with what they have going on or what they're trying to do? Look, so I think, you know, you look at their defense and they still have plenty of talent on that side of the ball. I think that's more of a, you know, because Gerard Mayo was the de de facto defensive coordinator. Um, you know, that's going to be the more stable of the two units going forward to start the season at, at the very least. Um, Alex Van Pelt was a finalist for the Bucks job, uh, Bucks OC job. He ultimately ends up in New England uh, under Gerard Mayo. They're going to look to strive for more, more balance, more cohesion between the two units, more of a marriage, as we've heard all last season. Um, and, and I think that's going to come in time that the, you know, the Patriots have several needs. They need to address wide receiver, offensive tackle. Um, they need to build that lineup a little. I wouldn't be surprised to see after if they go quarterback there, that the majority of their picks are on the offensive side, whether that be the line um, and obviously the wide receiver spots, because they do need help at those positions. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, they're, they're looking to build that locker room chemistry. The last couple of years, it's kind of been torn, right? Um, when you're not winning and you're playing under Belichick, it's not fun. Um, so they're going to get back to, obviously, I think a lot of the Patriot way, a lot of what Belichick has done is going to stick with that team um, and, and kind of be their identity. But it's going to come with a new identity that Gerard Mayo is going to bring in there. You know, uh, He's a very family-oriented oriented, oriented coach. He's going to bring some levity uh, to that to that locker room, but it's also going to be the same philosophies. Do your job. Come in. We're going to work everybody. We're going to pay attention to the little things. Uh, Bill Belichick is the greatest coach of all time for a reason. Um, the way he can break things down and simplify the game, um, he's passed that that knowledge on to, you know, his assistants and his coordinators over over the the course of their ten years there. Some have had success. Most of them have not. Um, because they've tried to copy and, you know, copy and print, um, copy and paste that type of organization onto the next organization that they go to. John Mayo is going to bring his own spirit, but it's going to be the same philosophies. We're going to do our job. We're going to work hard. We're going to outwork everybody else. We're going to focus on the small details of things and the success will come. Um, I don't, view this Patriots team as being stuck in limbo or bottom feeders for the next 10 years. I think they'll be able to crack, you know, to, to climb out from where they've been. They've got a very ambitious owner who isn't afraid to spend money uh, and, and who wants to lift another Lombardi trophy before he, before he passes away. So I expect them if they make the right selection in this draft pick and they get the quarterback right to turn this franchise around in the next couple of years. Yeah, and real quick, we will make the Cardinals selection before we get to JLo's last thoughts with the great JCL and the millions and millions. Arizona Cardinals select, and this pick is a write-in pick. It's a great friend of the shows. He's a Arizona local fantasy football expert, Mr. Jimmy Mundo, Mr. James Mundo. He's on a flight to Vegas for work. So at number four for the Cardinals to replace their lack of wide receivers, Jimmy Mundo for the Cardinals selects Marvin Harrison Jr. to put him up there with Kyler Murray, and he's going to give them a weapon after losing Hollywood Brown. Marvin Harrison Jr. is officially an Arizona Cardinal, and once again, that pick was made by James Mundo, Arizona native fantasy football expert. So before we get to thoughts on that, uh, J Lo, do you have any words for the great JC Allen since he's joining us? And we're moments away from Huncho, co host Huncho joining the program, and professional wrestler Cujo joining as well. Yeah, JC, as far as um, receivers go, do you think the Patriots probably double dip on the receivers in the second or third round? And who would be a target or a fit for the Patriots at the receiving end? I definitely see that. I think how the board shakes out at the top of the second. I, I could see it being tackle. I could also see it being wide receiver um, and then double dipping, um, you know, later in the draft. I think anyone who can catch is pretty much on their target list right now. 
Um, but th- there's plenty of guys who can fit the system. I think Brady and Rice would fit well if they wait to go in the third round. Xavier Leggett, um, and a lot of people like him going in maybe in the first or the second. But, you know, I'm hearing there's a lot of concerns um, just about the, you know, the lack of production in year one, two for him. Uh, kind of some, not immaturity as far as character-wise, but as far as um, ability-wise and s- s- consistency there. Um, so he's a guy who could fall into that, you know, that third round area. I wouldn't be surprised to see them aggress- be aggressive. And if there's a guy they want, move up and move down for him. Um, Roman Wilson is another guy I think could really intrigue them. Um, you know, hard-nosed wide receiver, loves to get his nose dirty in the blocking game. Um, there's there's a plethora. I mean, this draft is so, so deep. Johnny Wilson's another guy um, who can kind of fit that move tight, that big slot type of weapon there. Um, that they could that they could utilize. So there's um there's a plethora of guys they could look at go after at wide receiver. Um, but I ultimately think somewhere with their next three picks after their first round, if they do not move move off of that pick, which I think would be a mistake, you'll probably see offensive line wide receiver um, in those next three or three picks of theirs. Yeah, and JC, quick uh, first off. Before we have to tap you out, uh, plug some stuff if you would like, brother. And, uh, of course, give us your WrestleMania thoughts. I know you're a busy guy, but it was WrestleMania week, and we're all wrestling heads here. So give us your thoughts before we get joined by a pro wrestler himself. Yeah, so I finally got to catch up. I tried to avoid spoilers as much as I could. Anytime I saw one come on my screen, I quickly wiped it away. (laughs) Um, It was so... Uh, the Becky Rhea, Rhea match to open everything up, I thought it was really good. I think it was the right call that Rhea won. Uh, I didn't see any tag team spoilers, so I'm so thrilled that they split those belts up after having them, um, you know, combined for so long. And I, I think um, the right team won it for SmackDown, although we're going to be getting a draft here soon, from what it sounded like on Raw, um, and the, the, uh, Theory and Waller. Um, and I, I love the, the choice of R-Truth and and Miz and then the subsequent, you know, programming on Monday night, on Monday night raw. That was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, just kind of moving down the card. Um, I thought having Dudley there for the street, Philadelphia street fight was a nice touch to get the tables, the, uh, the, the crotch head, butt, all that stuff was fun. I didn't, you know, that didn't spoil it. Kelsey, Jason Kelsey showing up. I thought that was great. And I Lane thought, Johnson. And, what? And Lane, and Lane Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, you're, you're up. Um, as far as the big title matches, Sami Zayn versus Gunther, that was spoiled for me, but I thought that was a really fun uh, match. It was kind of, it's kind of interesting how it ended. I mean, I, I just, and I mentioned this in our group chat, they're just, they're dulling down finishers, I think, too much, you know, um, Sami Zayn has been always been a resilient guy, but for him to kick out of so many things he did, I thought that was kind of a stretch there. But good to see fin- him finishers win that. aren't really finishers anymore. No, mm, they're, they're not. not. So, but to see him win that title, um, that was awesome. And obviously, Gunther's going to be moving on to bigger things here in the meantime. Probably win Money in the Bank or something like that. Um, you know, I thought the main event between. Seth and and Drew was great. I think how they set that up for that rivalry between CM Punk um, and Drew to keep going uh, with Damian cashing in was awesome. I don't see Damian being a long-term champ, probably, you know, three or four months here, and then we'll see someone unseat him. So to let him cash in in a stage like that, I think was the right call after holding the, the case for so long. Um, and then just the, uh, you know, the more – Tom Foolery with CM Punk and and McIntyre on Monday Night Raw was great. Obviously, Jay beating Jimmy was the, was the call. Thought that was awesome. And I'll just move on quickly to the main event. I thought the main event was great. Um, it got kind of a little cheesy there at the end. I, I think if we're going pound for pound, you know, WrestleMania 39, Cody versus Roman versus this year, I think 39 was a better wrestling match. I think. 40 was a bigger spectacle with, you know, Taker coming up and, and John Cena coming out. I think John Cena made the most sense. Taker kind of coming out while it was still cool. And that unfortunately got spoiled for me. Cena didn't, um, was kind of like, eh, what does he have to do here? Um, but it, all in all, you know, I think we're finally in the era of Cody Rhodes. Roman, uh, will take a little hiatus, I'm sure, and be back. And, 
Uh, he's got that clause where he can challenge Cody Rhodes for a rematch um, as the defending champion. So we'll see if that comes up to, comes out to fruition. We'll see what comes out. I think they've set up so many different storylines there. Um, I will say seeing LA Knight and Randy Orton and CM Punk and all the guys that have kind of been screwed from the bloodline, Sami Zayn, come out to celebrate with Cody at the, the end of the bloodline was, you know, um, I thought that was fantastic. Uh, but all in all, great WrestleMania. I wish I could have seen it live. Thankfully, the cruise next year will not be during WrestleMania, so I will get to see it live. Um, and then as far as stuff, yeah, Pirate Parlay will be full swing, you know, heading into the draft. We'll have Dane Brugler on soon, which is going to be awesome. We had Trevor Sikkim on the last uh, web, the last episode. We'll have uh, John Vogel That was on. good He's, stuff. I appreciate that. I w- wasn't thrilled with the draft, but hey. Uh, when you got someone who does this for a living, you kind of lean into what they're doing. So, um, as far as other work, I mentioned at the top of the top of the segment when I was on here, look out for those draft profiles. I mock draft, and we'll just keep chugging along until the draft comes here. And then after that, plenty of content with mini camps, rookie mini camps, etc., all along the way. So, always a pleasure being on here with you, fellas. Yeah, JC, you're the man. You're a great guy with many great things to say. Whether it's wrestling or football, we're still trying to get you on Cleve and me. I know it'll happen soon, but regardless, brother, always a pleasure, especially with how busy you are just getting off the Bucks cruise. We truly appreciate it. And that was a hell of a rundown and breakdown on the Bucks cruise. And then coming on here and changing gears with Jaden Daniels talking mania. So Jack of all traits, Mr. JC Allen himself. And as the final boss says, hell of a show, JC. Awesome stuff, brother. We appreciate it. Thank you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you later. That's a great J.C. Allen over there from Bucks Game Day, Sports Illustrated related company. But guys, we can't really beat around the bush and gush about J.C. like we normally do because we got two guys ready to hop in the ring with us right now. We got our great co-host, Huncho, of course, and then we're going to bring in Cujo the Great here shortly as well, professional Cujo. wrestler. Cujo, we're going to be bringing him in here shortly as well. But real quick, Gene, JLo, Huncho, any words on Jimmy Mundo, James Mundo, fantasy football expert in Arizona, resident going with Marvin Harrison Jr., pick number four overall. Gene, we'll start with you. Man, they're, they're I don't know, uh, Arizona's hurting in a lot of different places. And I, I guess you want to get some help for, for Kyler Murray. They've uh, they're all in with Kyler Murray right now. I know there were some questions in the beginning of the season, but uh, just getting him back and and watching him play, they see what he could potentially do. So I, I guess I understand what they're what they're trying to do there. But there are just so many glaring holes, and um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. I guess that's the move you make if he's the best player on the board and he helps move this team forward. That's what you do. But. Um, Again, it, it just kind of remains to be seen how they um, how they work this offense based on the new the new head coach they have. Yeah, J Lo Hunch. Before we get your guys' thoughts, Mundo James Mundo. His explanation was Arizona needs offensive weapons after letting Hollywood walk and D Hop walk the past couple of years, giving Kyler a new receiver to pair alongside second year wide receiver Michael Wilson is a must at this point. I'm going to be pissed if cards trade down out of four this year with all the top heavy talent. So again, you know, that's kind of a Cardinals perspective. I could get behind them because really, I mean, no offense to Michael Wilson and Trey McBride, both had a good success last year, but if those are your top two targets, uh, 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 and Marvin Harrison Jr. could be a generational talent. Speaking of generational talents, we're joined on Facebook by Luis Mentavo. El Monito, Angela, real quick, J-Lo, give us your thoughts on the Harrison Jr. pick. Best player available. I honestly think the Crons are going to trade down, you know, especially with Minnesota with those two first-rounders because then Arizona will have three first-rounders of the draft to where they can get other players. And like J.C. said earlier, this draft is full of receiver talent. So don't be surprised if they trade out of it. But if not, then best player on the board, and it's Marvin Harrison Jr. It is top-heavy with receivers as well. I mean, there are really good ones throughout the first round, but, you know, after Neighbors, Adunze, and Harrison maybe as a minor drop-off. But that's why we play the game. We don't know these things. These receivers yeah. might be beasts 10 years from now, 
you know, round seven guys. You never freaking know. You never fucking know. Um, Huncho, any last thoughts on the Marvin Harrison Jr. pick before we bring in Kujo? What's up? What's up, fellas? And um, I would just like to say for them, I I feel like what Gene said, they have a lot of holes to fix. And I don't know if that, that's a start with Marvin Harrison Jr., but I, I don't think it's going to make any noise with uh, Kyler Murray. Um, I guess he put the PS5 down and he focused a little bit more on the field. And, um, we're going to see uh, what, what transitions over there. Um, I mean, go for it. Yeah, we'll see what happens over there. We'll see how it all plays out, like Huncho was saying. And we got Juice looking to trade up. Ah, if we did live trades, I think – this might turn into a real draft if we did that. With, yeah, would that be a lot of fun? You'd put your GM caps on. Um, you never know, says TB Long. But Cannibalist is laughing. We are going to make the Chargers pick before we bring in Cujo. We're not going to talk about the Chargers pick. We'll bring that conversation upon us down the road. But we're doing a celebrity pick here for the Chargers again. If we had another guest, this episode would maybe go to two hours long. You never damn know. So to speed things up a bit, for the Chargers selection, and we'll still cue the music here as well. To remind people, pick one, Juice from ONTAP Sportsnet, pick Caleb Williams for the Bears. Pick two, the Command This Podcast picked uh, Drake May for the Commandos. Pick three, J.C. Allen the Great from Sports Illustrated, pick Jaden Daniels for the Patriots. James Jimmy Mundo, fantasy expert for pick four, pick Marvin Harrison Jr., And we went based off the Walter Football latest mock draft. The Los Angeles Chargers select wide receiver Malik Neighbors. And that makes sense for them. They just lost Keenan Allen. They lost Mike Williams. They just brought in Harbaugh, who likes to make sure his quarterbacks feel comfortable. So go ahead and pair Mr. Herbert with Mr. Neighbors. Speaking of Mr. Neighbors, we got Mr. Cujo on right now, the professional wrestler himself. Big New Boy, York no. Giants fan joining the show. Cujo, how the hell are you, brother? Long time no talk, and uh, how's the wrestling world going? It's been good, man. I'm just out here just uh, just thugging it out, you know what I'm saying? Just uh, out here just doing what I got to do just to make the wrestling world great again. Hell yeah. I love that, Cujo. In the words of, uh, in the, words of the former president. <laughs> Cujo looking to make wrestling great again. Real quick, Cujo, before we let others get a bite at the apple and get to talk to a wrestler, which is pretty cool, just give us a rundown on uh, the Cujo gimmick and uh, your current status in wrestling, if you're in a certain promotion or the indies or what's going on, brother. All right, pretty much uh, Cujo is uh, more like a gangster-like gimmick. It's just straight, out the, straight from the hood as of right now. And... <laughs> I really want to know where I wanted to go with this, but uh, pretty much just want you know just keep thugging it out, just keep straight gangster. I I cut a promo about uh, at a corner store, me getting a beer and some chips, just living for the streets. You die by the streets. Yeah, <laughs> that's badass, man. And I actually seen that. That's awesome. As Grizz says, Cujo. Getting it out the mud. That's so true. Uh, G- hey, you need a you need a hill manager like me. I'll I'll make sure you win. We <laughs> by any means necessary. We'll make sure that you win. Um, fortunately, I'm a baby face, but I could be heel. You, you know, know. That's, that's the way to go, man. A heel is the best way. Man. <laughs> I, I've been I turned heel on this show here, and I'll I'll go at any of these jabronis here at any point. I'll just let them know, and I think that you'll free your soul if you become a heel. Oh, wow. Cujo has a proposal on the table. Huncho, any words for the great Cujo as he mulls over that proposal? I got to see the proposal. I want to really see this video, man. This is new to me, but I'm interested. Yeah, Jayla, what say you? We have Huncho wanting to see. We have Cleve and me saying get this guy a Paul Heyman. Jeans itching at the bit. Jayla, what say you for the great Cujo? First of all, pleasure to have you on, brother. And also, I'm a big wrestling fan. And I do it to Paul Heyman <laughs> manager because you know he, he he makes those wrestlers win championships and hold on to the belt for a long time. But what inspired you to become a wrestler, man? Uh, I've been watching it ever since I was a little kid, ever since I was ten years old. 
and that yeah. is, and that's been and that. pretty much the dream just because I like want to be just like a wrestler and just follow me all the way up to college. Man, I, I have to say, I, I appreciate indie wrestlers. All, all joking aside, I, I really appreciate indie wrestlers. There's, there's a place for everybody. I think where we are right now, it is a great time to be a wrestler. Uh, I, I look at uh, some of the different guys that have left WWE and gone down to the indies and, and become successful, uh, just being able to go around the circuit and, and do different things. And they've basically filled a void that's been there for for quite a while now and and again no matter where you are i mean there's a there are opportunities out there and i appreciate what you do i've watched you for a while on on youtube so i'm very familiar with your work and you know i i thanks to you you know you you make wrestling fun and and i'm i'm glad you're out here doing it yeah well that that's nice of you to say that that's love i appreciate that so we got TB Long saying, so that's why you're wearing the Giants shirt. No, he's actually our Giants guy because he's going to explain that next. Cujo's a Giants fan as well. That's why we have him representing the great Giants. And Cleveland, he says this guy has been working his ass off. He said, but, but I'm saying ass. Uh, you know, we're a rated R program, like Edge used to say. Go, Cujo. Uh, Cujo, first, if you want to plug your Twitter or Instagram, so – the great people can keep up with your wrestling work. And second, uh, just explain your Giants-ness a little bit, your Giants background, before we get to the great six overall pick of the right. Bucketeers month-long mock. You can find me on Twitter at Cujo Damone. It's spelled K-U-J-O-E Damone. And my Instagram is, um, it should be like a who is Myron or who is Ryu. But now it's I am Damone, and uh, and what you could find? Could you find the promo you cut on there? Yeah, yes, you can find them on both on both platforms. And um, are you in a promotion at all right now, or are you keeping it indie? I'm in the. I'm currently in the indies right now, but you can more than likely see me at Glory Pro or WrestleMax. And those take place in St. Louis and Illinois mostly. They take place in St. Louis and Illinois, yes. That's incredible stuff from Cujo. And quickly, Cujo, I know you're a busy man with a busy schedule. Just give us your Giants background a little bit. How would you become a big blue guy? I became a big blue guy ever since um, they first beat Eli Manning, first beat Tom Brady at the Super Bowl. It was in 2007. And ever since, like, Tom Brady pretty much ran the whole 2000s. And it's nothing against nothing against them, nothing against Tom Brady. He's one of the greatest of all time, but I didn't wasn't a big fan of him. But ever since Eli Manning came up, stepped up to the plate with the Giants with Davis Harry helmet catch, that that got me hooked to be like, wow, um, I like Big Blue, and the rest is history. Yeah, Daniel Jones is making Big Blue history right now. Goodness, he's getting paid a lot, and uh, we'll see what he does over there. But Giants need a couple things. Brian Dayball trying to spin the cycle in his favor. He was, you know, a very good rookie head coach. Regressed last year with the Giants. So, Cujo, with all the Giants need, where are you going? So far off the draft board, Caleb Williams went to the Bears by Juice, a.k.a. Machow, first overall. Second was Drake May to the Commandos. Third was Jaden Daniels to the Patriots. Fourth was Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Cardinals. Fifth, Malik Neighbors to the Chargers. The Giants are sitting at six. There's QBs left. There's a lineman left. There's edge rushers left. Who would you like to see the Giants take six overall, Mister Cujo? Uh, that's a tough one because we have a we need a, we could use a quarterback, we could use a receiver, and we could we're good on defense. We just need an offensive weapon. So, with the sixth pick in this mock draft, Throwing man, I will have I will have to say because I feel like. Because they're saying they're going to trade Daniel Jones, even though they spent a lot of money on him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But mm, can I do two sides or do I have to just pick it? It has to all be one. 
you could give us two options, but give us your top option. You can name two people, but give us which one you prefer, and we'll put that one down. Okay. It's either going to be between Michael Penix Jr. or Keon Coleman. Oh, wow. And who do you got them ultimately taking, Keon Coleman or Michael Penix? Hmm. I would say Keon Coleman because our receivers are too small and we need like a, a big body receiver to to even it out. We need a we need a big body just so they can start being acting like a, a Julio Jones or who's the tallest receiver or DK Metcalf. We need like a DK Metcalf type of build and Keon Coleman definitely matches that. Yeah, and, you know, Mike Evans type build. So. Mike Evans as well. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I no, hey, about don't worry about it. We we see where you stand, Cujo. But, no, uh, Roma Dunze is likely. But, yeah, that's the thing about the NFL draft. You never know. I remember what year was it, fellas, when Henry Ruggs got drafted to the Raiders. Nobody had him going that high. Not a soul in sight had him going over the other wide receivers. That's why, like, real Bucks talk said, is he likely? Possibly. But at the end of the day, None of us can sit here and say for certain that you never know. The Giants could easily be interested in Keon Coleman there, and he might be the pick. Uh, Gene, any reactions to that? I think the Giants could use a wide receiver. It's, but it, it is a legit pick. I mean, you, you have to look at quarterback. Uh, the quarterback position hasn't been elevated for years. Uh, it's been uh, consistently where it's at. And I, I think, you know, once you've seen what a, a quarterback gives you after a few seasons – after three plus seasons, I mean, that's pretty much what you have. Uh, I could see with the opportunity to get a quarterback, I could see them going out and doing that. Uh, J Lo, what say you there? Um, he had Michael Penix, he had Keon Coleman. So either way, he was thinking offense. And now you're seeing mock drafts say today, maybe not this high, but Penix is creeping into the first round. You see Keon Coleman hanging around the first round thoughts on if the giants were to take either one of those guys, but specifically for our mock Keon Coleman. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me with Michael Penance. I feel like he's definitely climbing a lot of boards. He had a really good pro day. I like where he's coming from. You know, it would be a pit that nobody will really expect to happen. So, and Keon Coleman's another one, you know, it's up in the air. You, like you said, you never know. So I must say Michael Penance would be an interesting pit for the Giants because he wouldn't have to play right away if they kept Daniel Jones. He can just sit and wait for his turn to go in the game and Daniel Jones doesn't play at a high level. Because because you're all right, Kujo. They're paying Daniel Jones a lot of money and he needs to go out there and prove himself. So I think if they were to go quarterback, it, it, would, it would probably be Michael Penance so he can sit and learn. I would not that at all. Cujo, uh, or Huncho, I should say, thoughts on the pick? Yeah, I'm going to uh, go with the uh, – I believe Keenan Coleman, that's a, that's probably a better fit right there because, like, you all know they're paying Daniel Jones a boat ton of money right now. So I don't think they're ready to give up on him just quite yet. I mean, Michael Penix, that'll be some good competition for him. But I see him going wide receiver here, uh, and I agree Keenan Coleman is – he'll be elite receiver in that uh, over there in, for the Giants. And again, let's remember – in the 2020 NFL Draft, according to PFF other sites, Jerry Judy, C.D. Lamb were both ranked above Henry Ruggs in the pre-draft rankings. Some had Justin Jefferson and Michael Pittman over him as well. Henry Ruggs ended up being the number one wide receiver drafted that year. So you never know what the hell might unfold or what the hell might happen on draft day as Grizz says I think this draft will be very different from most of the mocks after I agree Grizz and I think that's often the case and Gene I know you're a big proponent of that with the Bucks specifically but me and you seem to be more than others you never know what might happen on draft day and the one year I put all my time into trying to do a mock draft I mean I put hours days minutes into it I think I chose only 11 out of the 32 correctly. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, I I just – I leave it to the experts. Uh, the one thing that I, I will say, kind of going back to Daniel Jones, uh, he's been in the league since 2019. And, uh, again, that's I, – I think you've got a pretty good idea who he is. I don't know if maybe a, 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 the right coach could get something out of him. 
But I think where he's at right now, I would I would love to see them, you know, possibly go in a different direction. I just uh, you you haven't really seen enough from Dan, Daniel Jones and uh, Cujo. Maybe you can you could speak on that as well. But I just haven't really seen enough of Daniel Jones to say this is a guy that can get you to a Super Bowl because ultimately, as NFL teams, that's the your ultimate goal is to get to a Super Bowl. And uh, I don't know about you, Cujo, watching this guy under center every Sunday. Is is Danny Dimes that guy that's going to get this team to the Super Bowl? I don't believe it. I don't believe it is until something changes. I'm going to be real with you. Because because the Giants front office, I am not happy with the Giants front office at all. Because they paid a whole lot of money on a guy who – can barely get you five to six wins a, a season. Yeah. Or come, and, up with, or come up with average one touchdown, one to two touchdowns a game. And he turns the ball over a good amount when he does throw. But the his one rate, year – His interception ratio was high. Yeah. He got paid from a 15-touchdown passing season. You know, I know the Giants didn't have a lot of weapons, but real quick, Cujo, uh, before we get your closing thoughts and we bounce you out, I know you joined us a little later. We weren't expecting the great J.C. Allen to join us, so I appreciate your patience and sticking around on the Bucketeers as we are joined by the great pro wrestler Cujo of the independent circuit. Great guy and uh, new character for him as it's going great. But real quick, Cujo. Darren Waller, is he coming? Is he going? He just got traded to the Giants last offseason, and now nobody knows if he's going to play football, if he's going to be a rapper, if he's maybe going to be Cujo's tag team partner. Ah, man, whatever Darren Waller is doing right now, I I wish him the best, like whatever he does. If he stays with the Giants, that will be fine with me. But if he doesn't, if he just ventures off, if he ventures off, it's fine with me too. Yeah, I mean, you know, out of your control sometimes. Fellas, any last thoughts or questions, comments for the great Cujo before uh, he bounces out of here with his final words? I want to say, again, thank you for, for what you do, man. It's a lot of fun. Um, you're getting to, to follow your dream and, and do what you're wanting to do. And I would say 80 90% of the people in the world don't get to do that. So you're one of the the, very, the rare few that gets to go out there and follow your dreams and you know, I'm, I'm props to you and what you're doing. And again, if you need a, a heel manager, just let me know, man, uh, they can get you in touch with me and we can, we can win some, we can win some gold together. Me and you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. JLo, any last thoughts for not just Cujo, but the thought of Gene Heyman leading Cujo. I mean, why not? I mean, you know, Gene's worth a shot. You know, I think he can be a good manager and piss some people off. Why not? Throw him in there. Well, I can get some heat. <laughs> and then Cujo, um, how'd you feel about the Shaquan Barkley situation? Him jumping over to Philly. Were you pretty upset about it? Was he dead to you like he was to um Tiki Barber? Nah, I ain't, I ain't got no love loss. I mean, I ain't got nothing against that. I mean, hey, they uh. I hope they treat him right, but if not, I don't know what to tell them. And th- this is exactly right by Grizz. A lot of new OCs, a lot will want their guy, and we see that all the time on draft day, right? People mm-hmm. fluff up other talents. People over-mock other guys. People put out false narratives on people for better, for worse, just to try and get their guy. That's a twisted game we play sometimes. Huncho. Uh, any last words for the great Cujo before he hops out of the pod game and into the ring? Uh, I would just like to say thank you for uh, coming on the show and uh, sharing some of your knowledge with us. And um, I'll be looking forward to checking you out and see uh, how the wrestling goes for you. And um, like Gene said, congratulations, man. You living your dream, man. That's 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 pretty big, man. A lot of people don't get a chance or opportunity to do that, though. Well, thank you. I mean, the dream's not over yet, and the dream is – it's still a journey, so. Yes, sir. You got to finish your story, Cujo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know that's been said a lot lately, but damn it, you got to do it. Cujo, last thing from you, I guess, um, quick brief thoughts on WrestleMania in general and um, any last things you want to say for the pod? Uh, WrestleMania was awesome. I will say that. That's all I can say, and that's all I'm going to say. It's been, it was dope. 
it, was, it just made me feel like a little kid again when I was watching WrestleMania 21 and WrestleMania 22. It was just like, it was amazing. It was like, it's how it was supposed to be. I really agree with that. And last thoughts for the pod or about the Giants, Mr. Kuja? I wish you guys the best of luck, and I want you guys to just succeed as much as you can. And I'll be on. I'll be back on here whenever you guys will have me. We'll be um, we'll be hitting your phone when the Bucks play the Giants this year, as we do play the NFC East, Cujo. So we'd love to have you on either before the game, after the game, week of the game. But whenever the Bucks square up with the Giants this coming season. Um, let's see, is it home or is it away? It's on the road. Uh, They're in New York. Yep, they are away. I can confirm that as well because we're home against Philly and Washington. Then we're away against Dallas and the Giants. So Cujo, Dallas sucks. Yeah, fuck Dallas, fuck Washington Commandos, and <laughs> fuck all of them. But Cujo, when we do play the Giants, we'd love to have you back and chop up some wrestling and football, brother. Definitely. Yeah, and one last time, where can the great people follow you on Twitter, X, Twitter? We go with Twitter. All right, follow me on Twitter, X, at Cujo Damone, K-U-J-O-E, Damone. And my Instagram is at I am Damone. Well, keep killing it, Cujo. Thanks again for joining us here on the Bucketeers and taking wide receiver Keon Coleman to the New York Giants, six overall, the great wide receiver, out of FSU, and the backup plan would be Michael Penix Jr. So incredible stuff, Cujo. Uh, we hope it comes true for you, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, brother, on or off Thank here. You. It's always a pleasure. All right, keep it gangster, y'all. See you later, Cujo. That is the great Cujo. That was good. That was fun <laughs> stuff, right, fellas? Phenomenal. Yeah. You can't go wrong with a wrestler like in football, man. That's awesome. And that's why, you know, I could have had the Chargers guy on too. But between JC, between Cujo, we're already at an hour, 15 minutes, you know, can't be spending all night here. But it's been fun, this this mock draft run. Tonight alone, we had JC Allen pick Jaden Daniels, Jimmy Mundo picking Marvin Harrison Jr., um, Chargers going with the celebrity pick of Walter Football, Malik Neighbors, then the Giants going Keon Coleman. Before we get to the Gene Hotsey Challenge and final words, Quick thoughts on the Chargers going with Malik Neighbors. We'll start with you, Huncho. Yeah, I believe it. Uh, I would have said Marvin Harrison Jr. If the uh, Cardinals do trade out of that spot, or in the, I mean, if the car, yeah, if they trade out and the Chargers take that spot, slide up one, I can see them getting Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, you get somebody to go. Yeah, uh, Jayla, what say you? I would agree with Huncho there. Say if the, Say if a trade does happen, I could see them going Marvin Harrison if he's available. But what are your thoughts, J-Lo, on the whole thing so far? The Malik Neighbors pick in general, I mean. To me, he's the second best receiver in the draft. I think he'll be a good fit in um, L.A. I would hope Marvin Harrison Jr. would go there instead of Arizona. I think he would, he would look a lot better in that offense, in my opinion. But you can't go wrong with Malik Neighbors as the Nets option because I feel like he is the second best receiver in this draft class, and he would fit well over there. Mr. Gene, thoughts on the Neighbors pick before we get to the hot seat challenge and then our final word and get out of here for AW Dynamite. I think that I think that's a, a good move for this team. Again, you're it's the blind leading the blind right here. I'm I'm the last guy you want to you want to talk to GMing it for somebody else's team, but. You know, I, I feel like, you know, a lot of these these teams, uh, Tampa, I look at Tampa and some of the other teams that can make that pick best player on the board. And uh, who knows, that may be what we're looking at right here. What what fits best for them at, at that at that moment in the draft? Yeah, awesome stuff. And I agree, Gene. But hey, I, I like the move for wide receiver for the Giants, regardless or quarterback. Either way. I think the Giants would be doing good. And for the Chargers, like we just talked about, I think a wide receiver would be incredible for them um, after Keenan out. But who the hell knows, right? These are mock drafts. These are thoughts. You never know. And keep in mind, the best ability is availability. We've seen, um, we've seen Keenan Allen in, 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 um, in the, for the Chargers, for the L.A. Chargers, where he wasn't available when they needed him. And uh, that's the, just it, those kind of things stand out to me. So yeah, he's a he's a talent. We've seen what he can do when he's on the field, 
but we can also see what happens when he's not available. So um, again, it just remains to be seen what he can contribute when he's truly needed. And uh, plus says, I hope Coleman goes six now. That would be something. I guess we'd have a storyteller, a future teller on the show in Cujo. Speaking of storyteller, we're here on the Bucketeers every Saturday and then a weekday as well, usually Mondays. But with our draft specials and funkiness right now, it's been wonky a little bit. But Saturdays and Mondays primarily. But we'll go with Saturdays and weekdays for now. But in the future, Saturdays and Mondays. And we're live with the great Gene from Buck What You Heard, the man himself, Huncho, the 813 legend, J-Lo. We had the great Cujo professional wrestler join us we had jc allen from sports illustrated we had james mundo the fantasy guru from arizona share his thoughts we've had all our great listeners join the show as well with their comments and thoughts it's been awesome guys and now we got the app or we we had the appetizer but now we got the main course we got the gene hot seat challenge and i like j-lo to go on the hot seat this week oh here we go Dun, dun, dun. You know how it all works, and who's got the who's got the clock? I'll get the clock whenever you want it to start running. Just let me know, and um, I will make it happen. And um, I'm basing my questions week after week on what's going on in the news, um, things that I'm seeing from different writers, and I, I definitely will have something to say after as as my closing statement when we leave out. But um, I'm gonna ask the first question, and then we'll start the clock. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm ready for it. J-Lo, as Triple H says, are you ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Carolina Panthers, contenders or pretenders? Pretenders. Baltimore Ravens can win the Super Bowl, buy or sell? Buy. The Washington Commanders, contenders or pretenders? Contenders. New York Jets, contenders or pretenders? Pretenders. The Miami Dolphins will bounce back from a disappointing season. Buy or sell? Sell. Jags win the division. Buy or sell? Sell. Denver Broncos, contenders or pretenders? Pretenders. San Francisco 49ers get back to the Super Bowl. Buy or sell? Buy. Green Bay Packers, buy or sell? Shit, buy. Antoine Winfield Jr. will get signed before the season starts. Buy or sell? Buy. All right, that's it. That is it. And that was done in 58 seconds in total. Look at you, man. We have a pair. That was the fastest 50 seconds ever. (laughs) (laughs) You, you, You mustered through it. Yeah, my favorite one. J-Lo stumbled upon a little bit was the Packer one, you know, you know, I mean, that that's, I think they're legit this year, but time will tell, but I think they built something pretty damn good in that neck of the woods, but I like that one. And I like the Antoine Winfield Jr. Contract one, obviously I, I'm hoping it gets done here soon. Yeah. I've seen someone comment um, earlier on the program uh, about he wasn't showed on the Bucks cruise. I don't think that has anything to do with yeah, this contract. Yeah, neither here nor there. Yeah, I, I, you know, Tristan Wirfs couldn't make it, but uh, Huncho, thoughts on the hot seat challenge? Huncho I might. Be... I love it. I love that. That would be on next week, bro. Yeah, Huncho, you're I'll on be ready. next I week. I will throw this I'll out be ready there. Next week. No, my bad, Huncho. I'm going to cut you off. Um, I will throw this out there about Winfield Jr. I believe he's out of the country right now. He posted on his Instagram. He's in Morocco, I think, or Mon- I love Morocco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I believe. Yeah, but he's definitely out of the country on vacation right now. So I wouldn't be surprised if this deal gets done sometime after the draft. You know, you gotta give the man his props. You know, he's like Mike Evans. He's not a diva. He's not gonna go out there and cry for a contract. He's gonna just wait patiently and ball out. That's what he does best. What up, fellas, from our friend Steve. We had him on this past weekend, J-Lo, from the Command This Podcast. Steve's Jeez, a man. my guy. That was a what fun up? show. We learned a lot, um, for better or for worse, about Jay Gruden, the nature of the commandos. Um, they said they're going to have more and more podcasts come out in the near future about another. If they start uh, winning, they're just going to blow up with podcasts. I mean, you're going to have, like, 
they'll never have as many as the Bucks have, but there will be quite a few more podcasts than what you're seeing right now. Agreed. And, um, you know, the commanders are kind of, you know, when the Bucks hired Bruce Arians, tried to go veteran, try to get a player guy's coach in there. You kind of see, although the commanders went from Ron Rivera, they're kind of doing the same thing, but defensive side of the ball with Dan Quinn, you know, a guy the players can relate to. And you've seen a lot of effective free agents sign there. Austin Eckler, um, you know, Zach Ertz, uh, Marcus Mariota, a lot of high profile names in years past. Speaking of years past, it's never the past time here in the Bucketeers. It's always the present, and you guys are watching on YouTube, Facebook, or other outlets. You can catch an instant replay on Apple, Spotify, Google, or more. We're here with the great Gene, the great Huncho, the great JLo, all the great listeners. But sadly, before we got to get on the payroll here, it's about to be nearing the 8 o'clock Eastern hour. We got Dynamite approaching. We got a lot of... Good sports in the air tonight. About to be the final word section of the program. Uh, J-Lo, any final words for the show? Uh, I thought that was a real fun one. Oh, yeah, definitely. Another show, another great one in the words. You know, great job, fellas. Gene, always bringing your best, you know, even being heel, all good, you know. <laughs> and then Honcho, my guy, always good to have you, man. Another knowledge to the pod. And then Tampa Tones. You really are the final boss, bro. He's final boss mode tonight. (laughs) I'll take John Cena. I'll put that candy ass right down in the middle of the ring. Smack dab in the middle when The Rock goes to the ring. No, but it's always great with all you guys. We're all final bosses because each of you are great. Huncho, um, any last words for the show? J-Lo, that was awesome. Much love to you, brother. Huncho, let's see if you could top that. I just wanted to ask you a question, Tones. Who do you think is the best uh, co-host on the show? Wow. Oh. All right, guys. Oh, that'll do it tonight. That'll do it tonight. Let's just answer real quick. He is on tonight. Heel honcho in the room. <laughs> it's been fun, fellas. It's it doesn't phenomenal. matter who you think is the best co-host. Oh, the shit. Show. You're hitting me with that. <laughs> <laughs> what you're going to do is know your role, sit behind that microphone, and call the shots. Do you understand me? There you go. Everybody, everybody's taking the heel turn tonight. I love it. Straight up, that was a cherry on the top. <laughs> honcho going through a loop to get me there. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> I got put down like a motherfucker. Um, the best host is Richard saying fun show. Yeah, if, for those of you that missed it, uh, Richard meant to say Randy Gregory on our last show, and he said Greg Norman, the shark, the famous golfer. So that's an inside joke. Good stuff there, Richard. We love you, buddy. You're one of the good ones. Uh, Well, you guys are all great, but he's one of the best ones. But it doesn't matter what you think it is. Exactly, buddy. On the spot, man, we're going to put on the spot. Speaking of on the spot, for the millions and millions, Gene, millions. any great final word for the show? Man, I'm still yeah. trying. Uh, you know what? Uh, blindsided me with that rock <laughs> bottom. You know what? I, I honestly, uh, I've been seeing so many former players and uh, just people that have been looking at Atlanta and overlooking Tampa, talking about the Saints and, you know, writing these articles and stuff. And, you know, when I think about these articles, you know, I'm just like, put a little icy hot on it, turn it sideways, <laughs> straight up, your candy ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's just how I feel about it, man. So, uh, you know, the Bucks are the underdogs. I'm good with that, and you know, these guys will be held accountable. I'm keeping receipts and see how it all goes the rest of the season. Talk that yeah. shit, Gene. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> we keep more what receipts. I'm talking about. <laughs> we keep Bitch, more your receipts. game. Talk your shit. <laughs> we keep more I'm receipts than the soccer yeah. mom does from the weekly grocery trips and you know that's what we do around here and gene i love that little rock bust in that first in <laughs> is the command this podcast says when in doubt always answer a question with the question of course when that's you how get, you do it. yeah when you get pinned in the corner like that prick down there did to me just minutes ago <laughs> uh you know <laughs> when you do that when you do that, you got to back your way out with the question. And sometimes the only way out is in Gene got the cold shoulder twice tonight. Let this man manage. Well, you know, Cujo, 
he has a lot on his mind. Maybe yeah. maybe the little the less words is the bigger consideration for the great. Hey, Cooper. you never know. He may be DMing me right now. I don't know. You see? Yeah, yeah. Let, let's hope he's DMing you and not um, you know, Lacey Evans. Actually, yeah. Lacey Evans could DM me. I, I will, yeah, we'll there you go. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue with that one. <laughs> Give me mommy, man. I'm as mommy. <laughs> Two words for you, J Lo. Fuck it. <laughs> hey, hey, Tones. All I know is this: that Hancho for doing what he did. He just made the list. Yeah, he, he yeah. did. Hold on, let me. Hancho made the list. Let me put that down what from the, the great ones. The fucking list. I'm gonna and be off. That's what I mean. Yeah, Huncho, that means you're uh, off the show. No, I'm kidding, brother. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Look up Chris Jericho, make the list. Um, it, it was a great wrestling little bout. And Jericho got ripped off that year for main eventing WrestleMania as well. So um, a lot of stuff. We could go on and on, but we're at the hour and a half mark. We're on to AEW Dynamite in our Wednesday nights it's been a dynamite performance from three two one touchdown tampa bay we had the great gene we had the great j-lo we had the great huncho tampa tones here we were missed by cats by bucko by stunna but we had some replacement crest the great jimmy mundo james mundo from arizona the fantasy guru wrote into the show to make the arizona pick the man was on a flight still took time to be a part of the program the great jc allen from sports illustrated stopped by talked about the Buskers and the Patriots. And then we had the great legendary Cujo, the wrestler, join the show as well and get into some real fun stuff. Guys, that was another great one between Command This Podcast, On Tap Sports, JCL, and Jimmy Mundo, Cujo. We've been having a lot of great guests lately. And it's always fun, guys. Gene, glad to have you back. J-Lo, eh, no, I'm kidding. Always great to be with all you fellas. No, J-Lo, you're the final boss, brother. We're all the final boss, but on behalf of us, we'll be known. Let's, here, we're going to be the dark order for tonight since it's AEW night. The dark order's out of the ba- building. Fire the damn cannons. Go Bucks. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay blessed, everyone. Hit the subscribe button. Turn that notification bell on, and we'll see you guys Saturday Maybe earlier if you're lucky, but probably Saturday. It's been lovely. See you guys. Have a great night. Stay blessed, everybody. Take care, man. Go bye. I know you're nervous for the Rams, but you got to be a little enthusiastic after being there. Bro, that, that game atmosphere was ridiculous. The energy, like good speed. That place was rocking. Anyone was there, and a lot of the, a lot of the uh, Super Bug fans were there too. The, the Bug. Tampa Tones. We are joined by Lee Goon tonight, uh, host of the Pat and Aaron Show. Of WDAE, uh, Pat Donovan, and it sounds like Stunna is bumbling a little bit. Going to put him on mute for a second until that gets a little cleared. But we're joined by. Pat it looks Donovan. like Stunna is hanging out with Cheech and Chong in a car with the windows up or something.